action. Hi, this is Eric. I am the Grey Goat, and this is the Grey Goat Garage, and we're powered by OMEWarehouse.com. Today we've got me and the goat in this little uh, 212 cc Predator, non-hemi, with a hemi block and different stuff in it. But um, what, what we're gonna do is show you how to put on our ungoverned throttle kit. Uh, there's no tank on this uh, engine right now, but this bracket will work with the stock gas tank on the engine. So first we're gonna do is uh, un unbag uh, all, all the parts and you're gonna go, oh my gosh, there's so many parts. But how do we eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So this is what you're gonna get from OMB Warehouse. Instructions and a pile full of parts. Okay, but let's take it one bite at a time. We have our little spring clevis here. It's got an Allen, Allen wrench and an Allen screw in the bag. We're gonna put that aside. We have our throttle rod. We have the bracket, of course. We have the swivel bracket and then all this hardware. So let, let's start with the hardware. This is a what's called a step retainer and your conduit is going to terminate here on the hex head. The inner cable is going to come through the center of this. So we're going to start by putting a couple nuts on this. So we're going to start with this nut. We're going to get this inserted into the bracket. And then the other nut that, that spins on easy, that's going to lock that step retainer to the bracket. You're going to see a 7 16 uh, headed bolt here. This is quarter 20. We're going to run this up through the bottom of the bracket. We're going to use our white nylon spacer and then we're going to orient the bracket so it's faced this little boomerang bracket is going to go right on here like this and then we have a quarter inch lock nut not to be confused with the m6 1.0 lock nut that we're going to start on here the nuts are also close on these that, that you really have to pay attention. Make sure that they spin most of the way on by hand. So now what I need to do is get this couple 7 16 inch wrenches on this and get this tightened down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this down with the lock nut and make sure that that boomerang looking thing spins freely. And I'm going to verify that by going like this. Okay, so there's going to be a little bit of play there, but that bracket needs to spin freely, which it does right now. That's important for throttle action. So now we have to take the blower housing off the engine. We're going to take this one bolt out first, and then undo the four blower housing bolts. I'll get my big head in the way. Okay. And yes, I have gotten some people that say, oh my gosh, you got to take the blower housing off to install this. Well, if you'd ins if installed a billet flywheel, billet rod like this engine has, that, that shouldn't be a, a, a real tough issue for you. But um, hey, you never know. So we're going to use one of the supplied M6 1.0 bolts with the 10 millimeter head. And we're going to just get this started in this location right here that we took that other bolt out of. <clears throat> okay, now we have another 10 millimeter headed bolt and a lock nut. And we're going to put the bolt through the front of the blower housing the recoil and we're just going to put this nut here on the back side and get it started you know I'm not a big fan of using power tools to assemble stuff but for this one we're gonna because we're not we're not going into aluminum so we're not going to strip anything out and we're not going to jump on it like gorillas Then I'll take my 10 millimeter wrench and then I'll tighten this other bolt down. <clears throat> okay, 
now we can put the blower housing back on. And I'm gonna use this to get things started. Again, I'm not gonna use power tools on this. I've uh, stripped out too many blocks and had to repair them with Healy coils. So we're going the easy way. Okay. I'm going to come back and tighten these up later when I have the right tools. But we'll just get this on here snug for right now. Okay. Snap, crackle, pop. Blower housing's back on. Now, the easy way to attach the rod to the engine is to take the air filter off. Yeah, that was a little loose. We're gonna take the billet adapter off. It's like watching paint dry, having me take these off, huh? Now you're gonna, the uh, wall studs coming out, ain't that great. Which normally these studs are in the head so tight, that's not an issue. Um, so make, make sure that this stud goes back into the head tight. We'll get to that in a minute. So the rod we provide in the kit with that loose, we're gonna move that back off. Has two ends, one's bent at a 90 degree, one has a Z bend. So with the bracket in this position here, there's two holes. We're gonna put the Z bend in the larger of the two holes and just push it down. And then we're gonna move this carburetor back away from the engine to get the 90 degree bend into the top of the carb. Now we can move the carb back put our adapter back on. We're gonna use an eighth inch wrench to tighten that choke bracket back down. And when you're doing these bolts here, tighten them down evenly. Um, don't, don't just go all the way crazy on one and then not the other. See that stud spinning back in the engine, that's good. So we don't want to put too much force on one side versus the other. So don't have to go gorilla tight on that. And then use your 1 8 inch Allen wrench to tighten the chokehold bracket back down. And now you have the throttle working. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run our cable in through the front of this bracket with the inner cable coming through there and then the inner cable will attach to this spring clevis. I like to run these spring clevises upside down so it doesn't catch on anything. Run your inner cable here, use the set screw to lock this down and that's what it should look like when you're all done. I didn't have a governor spring here but if you use the governor spring, there's two small holes right here. Cut and rebend the ends of the stock governor spring. I, I like the throttle pressure with that setup, um, but you can run any spring between here and here, and that's gonna hold that throttle closed for you. So one thing that you don't want is, I want you to put some force on this and make sure that this doesn't, this part of the lever doesn't spring over and hold the throttle wide open. 
That's why this comes at an angle like that. I know it seems a little odd with, with that like that, but the issue with these engines is nothing's consistent. So, you know, we've had to make some compromise for that, but make sure that you check everything to make sure that this is not gonna over center, hold the throttle wide open. There's either, even some stop test operation by hand. So you need to follow the instructions and um, the, these are these come with every unit. They're a little hard to read, but it explains everything. And if you find that you're, you're over centering here, that means your throttle rod is too short. So you'll need to, to get a separate throttle rod and rebend the ends to make sure that it's the correct length so we don't go over centered on the throttle. So that, that's really about it. On the Coleman bikes, I've had some customers that say trying to use the stock throttle, that there's not enough inner cable to reach the clevis. At that point, pull the inner cable out of the conduit, shorten the conduit up a couple inches, then you'll have enough inner cable to make this connection here. Because you have to remember that stock cable comes over the, the, the top of the engine and comes into the stock throttle plate that sits right here. So you'll have plenty of extra cable with that by shortening the conduit, then you'll have enough inner cable to get over to this side. And that's really all there is to it. This is a, a, a fairly simple kit to install. Works with a stock gas tank, so you can keep the stock tank on, have an ungoverned um, engine with uh, the proper throttle operation. So don't forget your spring. We don't want it to hang open. I am Eric. This is the Grey Goat, and you're in the Grey Goat garage, and we're powered by OMBWarehouse.com.